Welcome to the fourth part of this tutorial. In this video we'll talk about measuring ground control points. At InFlights we provide drone mapping data to our clients worldwide. If you don't have account with us, please register one at inflights.com slash pilot. Measuring GCPs First thing that you should know about measuring GCPs is to set the correct coordinate reference system, or CRS for short. By default, GNSS receivers measure in WGS84 coordinate reference system and ellipsoid height. Our clients require the data in their local coordinate reference system and geoid height. To put it simple, you should set the correct coordinate reference system in your GNSS receiver job file setting. Each coordinate reference system has its own EPSG number. It can be found on spatialreference.org. You can see the required coordinate reference system in our dashboard for each project. Always measure the exact center of the marked GCP using a survey grade GPS RTK or PPK receivers or a total station. In this tutorial we will focus on GPS RTK rovers. GPS equipment works best if it receives unobstructed signals from the satellites. Obstructions like cars, billboards, metal fences, buildings or trees can bounce off the signal en route to the receiver. This can reduce measurement accuracy. GPS receivers should be set up with clear access to the open sky and out of range of potential interference. You should check estimated accuracy before and during the measurement. In this image it is marked as H for horizontal and V for vertical estimated accuracy. Both values should be around 2 cm, but always below 5 cm. Also, you should check the RMS value during the measurement. The lower the RMS value is, the better. The antenna should be leveled and it must remain stable during the measurement. Hand movement during measurement will influence the accuracy of GCP. To check if antenna is in level, the bubble should be in the center of the circular bubble vial. To eliminate pole movement, you should use a bipod or a tripod for the antenna's pole. Be sure to enter the correct antenna height in the GPS controller. True vertical antenna height is measured from antenna reference point, which is usually the bottom of the antenna body, to the bottom of the pole tip. Usually there is an antenna height written on the GPS pole. Any error in this measurement will affect your final point elevation coordinate. Enter correct antenna height and don't change it. Tighten the screw if the antenna's pole is retractable, so it won't accidentally lower itself. It can happen when you measure a lot of GCPs in one day. In your receiver settings, set the adequate observation period, epochs. 5 is recommended minimum. It is mainly used when measuring a lot of GCPs during one day. This value is also recommended if you don't have a bipod. 30 is recommended optimal number of observation periods. It allows for precise GCP measurement. More than 30 for areas in close proximity to buildings, power lines or trees. Bipod is required. Usually observation periods are one second long. In close proximity to obstacles, the GCPs should be measured for at least 30 observation periods. Don't save the measured point if the GPS receiver estimates measurement accuracy worse than 5 cm. The smaller the estimated accuracy value, the better. On average, it should be about 1 to 3 cm. When you measured enough points, export them in CSV or TXT file. In addition, export the measurement report from the controller. In exceptional cases, you can measure the characteristic terrain features after the flight. Make sure first that they are clearly visible in the drone images. These are features such as white stripes on the street. In this case, the accuracy of the results will be much worse. It is also possible to measure GCPs using a total station. 
but I recommend this option only for surveyors because of its complexity. Total station's accuracy of measurement is up to 1 mm, but it requires a precise survey markers to begin with. You could measure GCPs on facades of the building using the total station. Survey markers, geodetic markers and benchmarks are permanent objects placed to mark key survey points on the Earth's surface. They are used in geodetic and land surveying. Measure at least two local benchmarks. You should know their original coordinates. You can get those coordinates from a local land surveyor. Or in some countries from the National Land Surveying Office. This will help us to calculate the final elevation of the GCP and checkpoints. Here are some things to keep in mind. Before measuring each point, check the estimated accuracy and RMS value on the controller. Maintain distance from the buildings and other obstructions while marking a GCP. Keep the receiver's pole leveled throughout the measurement. Set the correct height for the receiver's pole. Keep the pole at the same height throughout the entire measuring process. Avoid measuring in proximity to overhead power lines. When measuring GCPs on the solid dirt, don't push the pole into the ground. The tip of the pole should only touch the point being measured. It is recommended to measure a single GCP from 5 to 30 observation periods. Know the EPSG code for the coordinate system selected by the customer. Thanks for watching, see you in the next part.